Hello, you absolute legends. Can you believe it? It's been over four years since Billy Mitchell, con man of the century, sued Twin Galaxies for defamation. The lawsuit has dragged on for far too long, but thankfully we have reached the final stretch. A trial date has been set for the 27th of October, which means we have only three months to go before Billy Mitchell gets absolutely destroyed. These final few months are where everything starts to ramp up, and one of the most exciting aspects of trial preparations are the depth positions. All we've heard from so far on Billy's side is Billy. Sure, he has provided some witness statements, but let me tell you, there is a big difference between having some words on a piece of paper and actually having that person tell their story face to face with a lawyer under oath. Billy Mitchell has claimed that he has multiple witnesses and that multiple people were involved in helping him achieve the world records. But what happens when Twin Galaxies gets to talk with those witnesses directly and ask them questions? Well, a complete disaster is what happens. When Billy's so-called witnesses are asked what happened, it ends up being the complete opposite of what Billy was claiming. Every witness that is being called is destroying Billy's case and exposing lie after lie after lie. And today, we are going to have a quick look at two examples. I'm going to show you Billy testifying under oath as to what allegedly happened, and then I'm going to show you what his witnesses said happened, and it's completely different. Billy will say that someone did something, and that very same person will say that it never happened. And it's not just Billy who's lying, it appears to be his lawyers as well. It seems like Billy's representation may be just as corrupt as he is. As you'll see, as soon as one of their lies gets exposed, they just completely change their story to something else, no matter how ridiculous it is. I cannot emphasize enough how bad things are going for Billy, and this video is just a taste of what's been going on. I really hope you enjoy. Now legends, I absolutely love cereal, and I know you do too, but let's be honest, Cereal just doesn't seem to fit into an adult diet. There's just way too much sugar. It's basically candy in a bowl. That's why today's sponsor Magic Spoon Cereal is so amazing. It's high protein and zero sugar, which is exactly what I need. I can fit Magic Spoon easily into my lifestyle because of its macros. One serving contains at least 13 grams of protein, four grams of net carbs, and no sugar. And it actually tastes good, which is shocking given that most high protein substitutes taste terrible. Personally, my favorite flavors are fruity and frosted, and I eat it before bed or as a snack between meals. This really helps me stick to my diet because I can satisfy my cravings with a high-protein meal that also tastes sweet, which stops me from binging on junk food. Magic Spoon even offer bars, which I must say, taste great. Definitely give Magic Spoon a try, and they are so confident they offer a 100% money-back guarantee if you are not happy. There are tons of flavors to try, so just click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen, and use the promo code LEGEND to get $5 off your order today. The witnesses we are going to look at today pertain to the world record Billy claims to have achieved at the Mortgage Brokers Convention in 2007. The very same world record where he was photographed standing in front of a modified machine with a non-original red joystick. First is a GameStop manager. In an MTV article from 2007, it says the GameStop manager was in charge of keeping the machine secure and that he had a special lock for the machine. This way, no one could open the back and tinker with it over the weekend. The article says that a security guard, a notary public, and a manager from a nearby GameStop were watching while the Donkey Kong board was placed into the machine. As the fabled story goes, Billy had the board sent to Nintendo to verify its authenticity. And the board was sent to the mortgage broker's convention where it was placed in the machine and the machine was locked. The fact of the matter is, the area manager plugged it into the game and he padlocked the game. He padlocked it and nobody could get in it. After Billy got the world record, the arcade was unlocked and the board was sent straight back to Nintendo. All through Billy's lawsuit, he contends that it's not possible that he played on an emulator because the board was verified by Nintendo. In his original court filings, Billy said the mortgage brokers input the board into the Donkey Kong machine before locking it. However, in a later filing, Billy said that it was actually the GameStop manager that inserted the board into the machine. Now, what's lacking in everything so far is any mention of the recording equipment 
equipment, because remember, this world record was apparently recorded to VCR. If you want to record Donkey Kong direct feed into a VCR, you need a converter that will convert the RGB signal to NTSC. And Billy Mitchell has specified the exact converter that was used. As part of their ongoing investigation, Twin Galaxies enlisted the help of Vintage Arcade Superstore in California. This is the same arcade retailer that was featured in the 2015 documentary Man vs. Snake. Definitely give that one a watch if you've never seen it. Vintage Arcade Superstore faithfully recreated the exact setup that Billy Mitchell claims to have used during his Mortgage Brokers score, even down to the same joystick. And this video shows you exactly how the recording setup works. So here we have an, a mostly all original Donkey Kong. The only thing that is changed from the factory is this red joystick. This is the similar or the same joystick that was used in the Mortgage Broker uh, picture. This is, at least to us, what is the, the same exact one. But this is an all original cabinet. It is also using the same VCR that was in the picture, the Panasonic VCR. And it is also using the same converter board, the two bit converter board that was used in, or that is what Billy said that he used. Going from the Donkey Kong video. Yeah. Donkey Kong video over to the to an inverter that is factory. The inverter is going through the video to the machine. We have a wiring harness coming out to the two bit score that Billy Mitchell used. From there, we're going to go back up to the VCR, VCR back down to the television, to a CRT. This setup is still on display at Vintage Arcade Superstore, so if you're in the area, feel free to pop in, say hi, and have a look. Now, in Billy's deposition, he explained that it was the GameStop manager that not only installed the Donkey Kong board, but also connected the converter and set up the recording equipment. So, eventually that Donkey Kong machine had a PC board put into it, right? Correct. Who did that? It was a guy who Walter contacted. He was a manager of GameStop. He came over received the board that mm -hmm. had been sent there, he put it inside the machine, and that camcorder was used by the lady Sheila to videotape him putting it in. Were you there? I was, I watched. You watched the whole thing? Yes. So, explain to me what you saw. I saw him take the board, and it was pretty self-explanatory that disconnects here, there, here, there, because you it only connects one way. He connected everything. He locked up the cabinet. He put a padlock on it so that it could not be opened. When you say he connected everything, what, what exactly do you mean? He hooked up the board um, to all the connectors, excuse me, and the um, converter board got connected in order to draw the signal that would be recorded and then he locked the cabinet so he installed the converter board yeah well the converter board was already there it just had to be plugged in logically if what billy mitchell is saying is true the gamestop manager would confirm that he did install the converter and set up the recording equipment and remember the arcade machine was locked so if the gamestop manager didn't do it it was impossible for anyone else to do it either but that's not what happened. In the GameStop manager's deposition, which was conducted last month, the lawyer for Twin Galaxies asks, Did you set up any AV equipment in connection with your installation of the PCB at the Mortgage Brokers Convention? And the manager replies, Not at all. They ask, did you set up any recording equipment? To which he replies, not at all. They also go into detail about cables that should have been coming out of the back of the cabinet if it was being recorded to a VCR. They ask, so is it fair to say that there was no RCA cable coming out of the back of the cabinet that you locked? That's correct. There was no cable, correct? There was no cable. Got it. I just want to be 100% certain there was no RCA cable coming out of the back. Yes, there was no RCA cable. The only cable was the power cable. 
In other words, there's no way for that gameplay to have been recorded to a VCR. Is that right? Not externally, no. And to this point, the guy that Billy said set up his recording equipment is flat out saying that not only did he not do that, but there was no way that the Donkey Kong machine was being recorded to a VCR at all. There weren't even any cables connected. Billy's lawyer obviously realized how damaging to his case this testimony was, so he decided to change the story completely and create a brand new insane scenario saying, I'm going to represent to you that Walter Day will testify that there was a 2-bit converter already attached to the board when the board was sent to Nintendo, and Mr. Mitchell will also testify to that, and that when the board arrived from Nintendo, it already had a 2-bit converter attached to it so that a cable could run where the power cord goes up and to a VCR. Billy's lawyer is legitimately fabricating a false story out of thin air that goes against everything Billy has said previously and is physically impossible. Let's rapid fire through some of the problems that makes this story ridiculous. The 2-bit converter doesn't attach to the board. That is impossible. The converter attaches to the inverter, which is a separate piece of equipment. If you wanted to attach the converter to the board, you would literally have to modify the board in a huge way. So Billy's lawyer is essentially saying that they sent a modified PCB with a converter attached to it to Nintendo, who perplexingly verified that everything was original Nintendo hardware. Then, after it was sent back, the GameStop manager installed the board without noticing that it was a modified board with a huge converter attached to it, and that somehow the audio-video signal was sent straight from the converter out the back of the machine, even though the GameStop manager didn't do it and says there was no cable. And the machine was locked immediately, preventing anyone else from doing it. Billy's lawyer is either a liar or an idiot. Likely both, because again, if this fairy tale were true, Billy would still be playing on modified hardware, making him lose by default anyway. Regardless, this is isn't what Billy Mitchell testified to himself, because Billy said the converter was already in the machine and was not attached to the PCB. So he installed the converter board? Yeah, well the converter board was already there, it just had to be plugged in. The converter was already, board was already where? Inside the cabinet. Okay. And he, you saw him? I saw him do it. You saw him install the converter board? I saw him do everything. Okay. Billy's lawyer kept pestering the GameStop manager about their new fake story, but the GameStop manager wouldn't budge. Reiterating again, I don't remember any other cable other than the power cable, so in that situation, I would say that is not what happened. So the GameStop manager's deposition was a train wreck, and it seems quite clear that Billy's gameplay was not recorded at the mortgage broker's convention. I mean, we already know that the footage on the tape didn't come from an actual arcade, so this isn't exactly an earth-shattering revelation, but to have Billy Billy's own witness completely shut down his make-believe story is definitely a big win. I guess the obvious next question becomes, what did Billy actually do at the convention really? And his second witness leads us to believe that it was likely anything but play Donkey Kong. One of the witnesses Billy provided a statement from was the chair of the mortgage broker's convention, Valerie Saunders. In her statement, she didn't say that she saw Billy get the record, just that she was at the convention and was notified when it happened. As it turns out, there really isn't anything in her declaration that was refuted in her testimony. But there was something else she said that was very interesting, which was exactly when Billy got his world record. Now his tape of the world record is 2 hours and 39 minutes long, and this is exactly the length of time that the 2007 MTV article said it took for Billy to achieve it, so everything lines up there. It also said that it was his second game of the day. In Billy's deposition, he said that he achieved the score at around 1 or 2 p.m. Which of those three days did you perform the score? Saturday. Saturday. Uh, what time was it? Uh, early afternoon. So around what time? One. Uh, why do you think not later than two? Uh, is there a reason that you that you're telling me that it was um, between one and two when you started? Was it was that when you started or when you finished? No, that's when I finished. About two, I'd say. When did you start? Oh, I. I like nine, ten in the morning. You started around nine or ten. You finished around one or two. Yeah. Again, logically, if this story were true, if you were to ask Valerie Saunders, who was managing the event at the time, what time Billy finished, she should say the same. But once again, this isn't what happened. Valerie said the event started at around 10am, which is when Billy began playing. 
Valerie recalled, Of course, I have no idea how long it takes to get whatever his ultimate goal was of a score, but it seemed from the time that he started to the time that he broke it, it was a very short period of time. Because I remember thinking, Oh gosh, you know, this is kind of not fulfilling the goal or objective of having him in there for a long period of time to drive traffic into the exhibit hall. So I recalled it being very early. Twin Galaxies then sought clarification, asking, Can you give me an estimate on the length of time that it took Mr. Mitchell to achieve the world record from the time he started. To which Valerie replied, I mean, thinking back, it seemed like it took 10 or 15 minutes. Now, of course, I was doing other things, but I do recall that it was extremely short. It appeared to me to be an extremely short period of time. Valerie reiterated multiple times that there was just no way Billy Mitchell played for as long as he claims. At most, it was 15 minutes. Hours less than the amount of time it would have taken to achieve the world record. So just to recap what we now know in regards to this alleged mortgage broker's world record, the cabinet itself used a modified red joystick that according to Billy Mitchell's own testimony confirms it's not original and that he would never play it. What about the color of the joystick? If it wasn't black, I wouldn't have played it. Why is that? Because the other joysticks are not real joysticks. They're not Donkey Kong joysticks. They're not four-way joysticks? They're not authentic joysticks. They'd be something else? Yeah, they'd be something either not from Nintendo or something I'm not familiar with playing. The person who set up the machine confirms there was no recording equipment connected to it and no way for the VCR to record anything. And the manager of the convention says Billy Mitchell only played for 10 or 15 minutes. When Billy tells the story of him achieving the world record, he claims there were thousands of people watching. Uh, was the convention open at the time? Yes. Were there people watching you? Yes. About how many people? There were thousands of people there. But the manager of the convention testified that he achieved the world record so quickly and so early that there was no one there. And I believe that's intentional. Billy didn't really want anyone from the public around to see what happened, because then they would see that the record didn't actually happen. Billy's entire shtick is to say that there were thousands of people watching, when in reality, the only people that were around were his frauds to friends like Todd Rogers. The hilarious thing about these testimonies is that they come from people Billy Mitchell himself brought forward as witnesses. These are people that Billy Mitchell said would prove that he achieved the scores. I've been trying to figure out some kind of logic here, but I just can't wrap my mind around how this happens. Billy made up this fantastic story about how the GameStop manager set up the recording equipment and then brought him in for his testimony only for him to say that it never happened. It begs the question of why did Billy even bring him in? It makes no sense. And the crazy thing is that this is just scratching the surface. All of the depositions have been an absolute disaster for Billy. There are quite literally hundreds of lies that are being exposed. Now you might be thinking all of this extra evidence is just beating a dead horse. We already know Billy cheated because of the gameplay footage and we've known this for years. But remember, Twin Galaxies is suing Billy Mitchell for fraud. And that trial is going to take place at the exact same time as the trial for defamation. So the trial isn't just about the cheating allegations, it's about whether or not Billy Mitchell committed fraud, and Twin Galaxies is seeking punitive damages. So all of these depositions don't just show that he cheated, they show that he is a compulsive liar. He lies at all times, everywhere, even under oath. Billy's deposition, which is six hours long, is jam-packed full of perjury. The jury is going to see this, the jury will hate him, and the jury will destroy him. I don't know how strong the Twin Galaxies case against Billy Mitchell actually was, but what I do know is that the jury will hate Billy so much that they might find him guilty just because they want to see him pay. I seriously cannot wait. Thank you so much for watching, you legends. I hope you are having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.